I'm Steve for This With Cars, and this is now my fourth video trying to get the Land Rover Discovery XD to run. In previous videos, I got the engine to turn over, I got the fuel pump to run by hot wiring it, I fixed some broken fuel line, and the way it sits right now, I still don't have spark or fuel. The problem must be with the computer or some sensors. So let's hook up a scan tool and see if we can learn anything. Okay, I have my scan tool connected to the ODB2 port down there. My scan tool can talk to two computers on this vehicle, the computer that controls the engine and the computer that controls the anti-lock brakes. So let's take a look at the engine. We'll have to have the ignition to on. There we go. The scan tool cannot communicate with the engine control computer. Let's try the anti-lock brake computer. Okay, it is talking to the anti-lock brakes. No voltage at ECU pin one. So the anti-lock brake computer is also not able to communicate with the engine control computer. Let's find the computer under the hood and take a look at it. The computer that controls the engine is hidden over here underneath this plastic cover. Let's try to figure out what it takes to get to it. These little bolts are eight millimeter. If we look down here, what was below that washer bottle, pretty corroded. And that water might have gotten in and damaged the bottom of this computer. So we have three connectors on the top get those undone and get this pulled out of here. It's not looking very good. So let's get this opened up, see if any water got in there and damaged anything. Doesn't look like there's any damage in here. Everything looks fine, even on the bottom of the circuit boards. The ribbon cables seem in good shape. No damage on the backside of where they connect to. I do have another computer, this one right here. The case looks in a lot better shape. And the important thing is that these numbers up here match up. And they are the same between them, but that doesn't mean that I'm not going to run into a problem. It's possible that I could plug this in and everything will work fine. It's also possible that I need to take this to the dealer and get it programmed with my security codes before I can start the truck. But if I put this in, I should at least be able to communicate with this computer if everything is working correctly. Let's connect it up real quick and see if there's any communication with this ECU. I'm just going to temporarily set this in here and connect it up until I know everything is working correctly. All the cables are connected. Let's try this again. We have the ignition on again. We want to connect to the engine. We still can't communicate to the engine. Now I'm thinking that we definitely have a wiring issue. Let's make sure that we can still connect to the anti-lock brake computer, and we still can. I decided to check the fuses again real quick. These four fuses highlighted here are the four that deal with the computer. Also here on satellite two, number three, anti-lock braking that controls the computer for the ABS, as well as the power to the ODB2 port. But we know that that one is working, but I've taken that one out and cleaned it as well. So far, there's no difference. I did notice that some of the wiring down there, this is the relay that starts the fuel pump. Has some nicks and some bare spots along it. So maybe something's been down there chewing up the wiring. I think this calls for a lot closer inspection. Just a precursory check. I just found a broken wire right here. So we'll need to pull what's left of the tape right here off and definitely double check all these wires because this one is broken let's hope once i get all these broken wires fixed that we'll get power to the ignition system and the fuel pump here's that broken wire the other end of it comes way down here there's not much left sticking out here 
but let's get this reattached. This is a really tight area to work, so it's hard to film this, but I put a butt connector here, and then I'm going to slip a heat shrink over that, melt that, and it should be good as new. And then I just need to fix the insulation on these other wires that aren't actually broken yet. I have that wire reconnected now. Let's turn the ignition on. Ooh. We can hear the fuel pump now. The fuel pump is actually running on its own. Will this actually start now? Let's give it a try and find out. Now come on. Yes. not responding correctly to throttle inputs. I'm lagging behind when I'm hitting the pedal. But this is a good start. I half expected there to be a bunch of stuff that blew out of the exhaust pipe, but doesn't look like anything did. There's a puddle underneath the truck. Looks like we might be leaking oil from somewhere. It is just absolutely dripping oil or fluid of some sort. So let's put it up on the lift real quick and check this out. Now that I can see it better, you can see the fluid is actually reddish in color. It looks like the transmission lines have become rusty and are leaking. So it's not engine oil, it's transmission oil. Everything's back in place and I was using the original engine control computer when I started it. Satisfy my curiosity, let's see if we can communicate with the engine now. We do have the ignition on. There we go. It's now seeing the computer. So it misfires on multiple cylinders, oxygen sensor, heater circuit, open downstream, measurement, uh, low bo battery fault. Who knows how long those have been in there. So let's just clear all those out. See if there's any codes. No. We'll check next time that we run it if any codes appear. This has sat for so long. Who knows when these codes happened, could have happened when I was cranking it before. I'm sure we'll be using a scan tool on this vehicle much more in the future. Finally, after four videos, I have the Land Rover Discovery XD running. It looks like I was very close to figuring out what was wrong with this before when I was replacing the relay pack that runs the fuel pump. I think the ECU was just in the way for me to see that there was a damaged wire there. The Discovery runs, but will it drive? So that's what we'll get to next time. I'll have to fix the transmission lines and obviously look at the brakes. So if you want to see more videos like this, comment below and click subscribe.